Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Susie. If you are new here, I like to do a lot of DIY, decorating, thrift flips, thrift shopping. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Today is the release of the new Iron Orchid Designs Christmas release. I'm happy to say that I am a stockist for IOD. I do not sell online, I only sell in the shop. So in today's video, I want to show you the new releases, what I have, and do just a couple of easy projects using the Christmas IOD. For the first project, we're going to be using the Noel Paint and Lay. This has so many beautiful designs. It is eight pages of designs. I just can't even imagine all the projects I'm going to be able to complete and sell in my booth. For today, I'm going to go ahead and knock the biggest one out and use this Noel word. Now, I had already thrifted, or I think um, at a yard sale, got this palette sign that was already made up and already painted red so now i'm just going to cut out the inlays and all the little um icicles and the words individually and place them on the sign kind of how i want them this sign was already painted red but of course i didn't have a color exactly like it so i'm going to do just a quick coat of my red paint over this paint so it does match when i put the inlay on Once my layer of paint is dry, I'm going to begin with the inlays. Now, when I first started doing the inlay, I was super afraid of them, but over time and practice, they've definitely become more easy. What you want to do is put a liberal amount of paint in the section that you're working with and even it out, and then you want to place your inlay with the grid side up. Um, like I said, work in sections and um, I just lay it down and kind of press it down with my finger. And then once I have it all pressed in, I'm going to wet it and roll my brayer over it to make sure every little bit of the paint is stuck down smooth. And I'm just going to continue this process throughout the whole sign, a liberal amount of paint pressing the inlay down with my fingers and then wetting the back of the inlay completely and rubbing it smooth with my brayer. You don't have to use a brayer. I have used a sponge, but I find that using the brayer always gets the best results for me.
after you get all the inlay stuck down, you want to let it dry completely, and then you want to come back and wet it again. And I, again, just do one section at a time, and you want to let it sit for just a minute after you have wet it before you try to pull it up, or else it will not have all released really well, and you might tear it, which I did end up tearing this L just a little bit, and but I think that was mostly due to um, I had pressed it in the palette board at the creases really well but try not to tear your inlays when you're removing them because remember you can reuse these for like three times the paint will just get a little more faint each time i don't know that i'll be able to use these again because they do have the red paint on them as well but i will definitely try them and here I just took a dry paper towel and dabbed the little a bit of excess water that I had after removing them and then went on to the next section until I had all of the inlays pulled up and now the beautiful image has transferred on to my sign. Once I had all the inlays transferred, you can see I went back and added a few on the sign. Very important step is I took it outside and I did a spray sealer over it and that just seals in all the paint. So when you come back and do the distressing like I'm doing here now with the 220 grit sandpaper, it does not smear it. It merely distresses it. And I wanted to do that just to make it not such a stark image. And then once I had lightly distressed it, I just added some clear wax and let that dry. And now I have a beautiful, hand painted sign. For our second project, we're going to be using the Christmas Valley Transfer Pack. Again, eight pages of beautiful designs. So many things I can make out of this. There's all these cute little woodland creatures, lots of greenery, of course, the red truck. So I have another thrifted palette sign that is already pre-made here. I'm going to go ahead and use the red paint again because I have it out and I knew that it would cover the words there without having to sand this down. So I'm going to end up covering it with two coats of the red paint and then you very important when using transfers you want to put a sealer on first i have the dixie bell top coat here and this is a gloss i don't normally like to use a gloss so i'm trying to get this used up and it does work perfectly for transfers so i just put a nice coat of the top coat on it and let that dry completely very important let it dry completely I decided to use this bear and then a couple of other little embellishments on him, mainly because he was about the only thing that didn't have some red in it, and I have the red back here. So I'm not even going to speed this up, really. This is 
well, I did speed it up just a little bit, but this is almost real time putting this transfer on. This one was super easy to let go because it was kind of a, a bumpy wood, but you can tell that once you kind of get some air up under there, it just pushes the whole transfer down on the image and releases very easily. So I barely had to rub any on this transfer. And then once I lifted it off, you just want to take the back of your transfer and rub it in and burnish that image in to the wood really well. a little bit more greenery on with the bear and now I'm going to lightly distress this just to knock off some of that shiny top coat and make it a little bit more distressed and this project's complete that is how easy these transfers are We are going to be using one of the many molds that are in this release. This one is called Jingle, and I just love the deer and the bell and the bows. They are all so cute, and of course, I have another rustic wood round that I thrifted. It's funny that I picked a lot of these rustic wood items for today's flips and did not even mean to. When you first use your molds, or each time you use your molds, you want to dust them with some cornstarch just to keep your um, clay from sticking. So I just lightly dust it with a brush that I have set aside just for my cornstarch. And then I'm just going to work the clay around in my hands until I get it kind of soft enough and then press it all around in the mold. And these IOD molds are so easy to use because of their micro rim. They're, it's easy to clean up the edges, so it doesn't take long at all to get this um, mold prepared. You just want to get your back flat and all your edges cleaned up before releasing it. I've had several people tell me that after you get your mold prepared now you can stick this whole thing in the freezer and it will make it easier to turn out especially for all these intricate details and his antlers and such but I'm too impatient for that so I am just going to carefully attempt to turn him out without injuring him in any way um, sometimes it works and sometimes it's a little more difficult um, this one was a little difficult, but I did end up getting him turned out without any injuries to his giant antlers. So I'm going to let him dry here on the wood round for a little while. And then I have just glued him on with some tight bond glue and he is stuck down good. And I'm just going to paint the whole wood round, including going over the deer with my homemade white paint that's just a mixture of a bunch of different white paints that I had laying around. Um, I like the color of it and it's still hanging in there with me for my smalls. So I'm just, it takes two coats, but it gets covered really well. And that's all there is to this flip. And I think this one actually turned out to be my favorite of today.
Finally, we're going to be using one of the stamps of the release. The one I have here is the Cozy stamp, and I love the little, um, like, old sweater details there on the back. And I had thrifted or bought at a yard sale another stack, actually a huge bag of these wood rounds. Someone had already started making ornaments with them, and the insides are partially painted black. This is not even half of all the ones that I have, but I'm going to go ahead and finish painting them all the centers black with some ink chalk paint from Waverly. When you first use your stamps, you want to be sure and rough them up with a little bit of a light grit sandpaper. I like to just go ahead and do the whole pack while it's still on the transfer backing and, and down really tight because you do have to pull really hard to get these off the first time. So I just go ahead and rough it up now before I use any of them. And then I'm going to pick out just a few of the ones that will fit on my little wood rounds and I'm going to stamp them directly onto the little wood round ornaments. I'm going to be using the erasable white chalk liquid. I just like the way that it looks, especially on black, because it does look like a chalkboard. And I'm just going to stamp each of the images with the white chalk liquid. And these are just that easy. I think they turned out so cute. I especially love the poinsettia like sweater piece and the poinsettias. Those are my favorite of them. I went ahead and removed all the juke string twine because I think I want to put a white twine on them. And then I'm even considering painting the backs of them white and doing the black stamps. I did spray these with a spray sealer, but that is all there is to it. And I just love how all these little ornaments come out. I hope that y'all have enjoyed the four flips, wood flips that I did today. Stick around just a minute and I will introduce all the new IOD releases to you. Okay, we have the Christmas Valley Transfers. We have the Noel paint inlays. This is the pretty and plaid stamps. Heavenly stamps. Cozy stamps. This is the bauble molds. Holly Lane Mold, the Blitz Mold, 
And lastly, the jingle mold. Thanks for watching. Hope y'all have a great night.